Today's episode is the second in our series where we'll help you find out if doing your own bookkeeping is right for you. It isn't right for everyone, but after listening to this series, you will have a good idea if it's a good fit for you. Listen in and find out what you need to do your own bookkeeping. You're listening to the Mastering Your Small Business Finances podcast, where we get straight to the point on topics that ultimately affect your bottom line. That's right, as an entrepreneur with a small business, money management, growth, marketing, they all affect your bottom line. I'm your host, Chris Ponick. I'm a certified public accountant, and I've been helping small business owners like you navigate and easily understand these complicated topics for over 25 years. I'm a wife, a mom, a grandmother, and a small business owner myself, so I know your time is valuable. In my free time, I make the best sugar cookies and have mastered an amazing chocolate chip cookie recipe. And that's not just my opinion. You're in the right place. I promise your time will be well spent here. Each week, you'll gain confidence and clarity while making a successful impact on your business and grow your bottom line. Get comfy. Grab a cookie, and let's get straight to the point with this week's episode. Are you looking for a computerized software solution to do your bookkeeping? I highly recommend checking out QuickBooks Online. I've been using QuickBooks myself for over 20 years, and they really know how to streamline processes and make your bookkeeping and recording your transactions simple and easy. QuickBooks is one of the top software solutions used by small business owners, and I would say that over 95% of my clients are currently using QuickBooks for their businesses. One of the features most of my clients and I take advantage of is the option to set up bank feeds. You simply link your bank account to your QuickBooks account, and QuickBooks will automatically import each transaction into your QuickBooks file. You'll save a ton of time not having to manually enter each of these transactions, You simply review each of the transactions and make sure they're getting recorded to the appropriate account. And then click one button and they're in. Want to know more? Head over to financialadventure.com slash quickbooks and learn how you can save 50% off of your first three months. Welcome back. Today we're going to be diving into what's needed if you're thinking about doing your own bookkeeping. First, you need to make sure that you keep your business and your personal accounts separate. So you'll need to open a new business checking account, a new business savings account, and if you decide to have any credit cards, you want to make sure that you have those in your business name as well. This is going to save you a lot of time since you'll only need to record your business transactions. If you use your business account for a lot of personal transactions, these will be additional transactions you'll need to record each and every month. So if you keep those out of your business, it will save you a lot of time. If you're a corporation or an LLC, you'll need to keep your personal transactions separate from your business anyway. You're going to need a process to set up your bookkeeping. You're gonna wanna decide on a few things like, how are you going to record your transactions? How are you going to store your receipts? When will you do your bookkeeping? You're going to need a tool or a bookkeeping system. There's many options available and your first decision will be whether you want to do your bookkeeping manually with something like Excel or a spreadsheet, or if you want to use a computerized software system such as QuickBooks, Xero, or Wave. When looking into software, you want to make sure that you compare pricing and options. This will be a really important part of your bookkeeping, and you'll want to make sure that you enjoy the system that you choose, or it will make doing your bookkeeping something that you dread, and you'll most likely put it off, and you don't want that to happen. Some knowledge of accounting and finances will be helpful as well, but I promise you'll learn more about all of this when you continue to do your bookkeeping. Most computer systems do all of the back-end processing, so you don't need to worry about accounting concepts and what's happening behind the scenes, like what's getting debited and what account is getting credited. That's all happening automatically for you. But it is important to have a general understanding of some of the important terms. Here are a few that I thought would be good to go over quickly today. Assets, liabilities, and equity. You'll hear people talking about this a lot. These three items all show up on your balance sheet. Assets are what a company actually owns, and they're made up of items like inventory, accounts receivable, 
cash, and fixed assets. Liabilities are truly what the company owes. So you would be thinking about accounts payable, loans that you have to banks or others, credit cards, and equity, simply put, it's the investment a business owner has in the business. Or if you wanna think of it this way, if you took all of your assets, paid off all of your liabilities, the net amount that's remaining would be the equity total. You might be asking, so what is accounts receivable? I mentioned that in the assets section. Accounts receivable is what customers owe you. Inventory would be an amount of unsold products that you currently have in your business. Accounts payable would be bills that you have for vendors that you need to get paid. Sales is all of the sales that you have or revenue that's coming into your business. Expenses would be all of your money going out that are true business expenses. Once you have a process and a system set up, you'll be able to start recording your transactions. Like I mentioned before, you will need to enter and record all money coming in and going out of your business. This includes items like invoices when you're recording sales to your customers, bills that you have coming in to record any of your expenses, personal transactions. I know we mentioned before that you should keep all of your personal transactions out of your business, but let's be honest, we know it's going to happen sometimes. But when you have a personal transaction, you need to record it as a draw or a contribution, which actually is in your equity section that we talked about previously as well. Credit card transactions, you'll need to make sure that you get all of those accounted for. And any additional income or expense that might be running through your business. All right, to recap this episode, we want to make sure that, number one, you keep your business and personal accounts separate. You need to set up a process to do your bookkeeping. You need a tool such as a bookkeeping system or if you decide to do it manually, that's fine too. You need to have some knowledge of accounting, but like I mentioned before also, you will start to learn that as time goes on. If you're starting to consider doing your own bookkeeping, make sure to grab our free guide on the five essential strategies for stress-free bookkeeping. Go to financialadventure.com slash five essentials to get your copy. That's the number five and essentials. And what's at least one thing you will take away from this episode that will help your business succeed and grow your bottom line? Do you need to be held accountable? Join our private Facebook group and post your action item. We'd love to support you. Thanks for taking the time to tune into this episode of Mastering Your Small Business Finances. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it for you, I'd love for you to give it a five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. Visit financialadventure.com for the show notes, links from this episode, and while you're there, leave a comment if you have a topic you're interested in learning more about that affects your bottom line. If you're looking for a community where you can ask questions and get feedback about your small business, join my private Facebook group. You can find the links to this group and more on financialadventure.com. And remember, any financial information shared on this podcast is not to be considered professional, financial, or tax advice and should not be solely relied upon. Please consult your CPA or tax advisor for an opinion on your specific circumstances. I'm looking forward to having you tune in next time. Until then, dream big, follow your heart, and love what you do.